Shalom, body of Messiah. Mark Cooley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. We pray you are doing well. We pray that Yah's peace is surrounding you. We pray that you are growing and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh's instructions. Today, I want to share with you about Yahweh is our shield. And in the times in which we live, where there is darkness all around us, lawlessness all around us, wickedness all around us, compromise all around us, the enemy all around us, I want to just share this word with you to encourage you to strengthen you that Yahweh is your shield we are also I don't know be this teaching or the next one we're going to talk about as well that he is our hedge and what the word shield and what the word hedge means in Hebrew so that we can renew our minds that no matter what's going on no matter where we are um, and especially as we are standing in the gap for the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, that Yahweh would be their shield in this difficult time. So let's start out in Genesis chapter 15, and we'll begin reading in verse number 1. Now this is Yahweh um, introducing this side of himself to Abram before Abraham's name was changed to Abraham. And Yah said, After these things the word of Yahweh came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram, I am a shield to you. Your reward will increase greatly. <clears throat> so Yahweh said, and he continues to say to you and to me through the Torah that he is our shield. He is our shield. Now let's turn to Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 3. And we will read in verse number 3. Psalms 3 3 and it says um, let's read starting in verse 2 this kind of puts it in context um, but I'll start verse 1 a psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom O Yahweh how my adversaries have multiplied how my adversaries have multiplied. Many are the ones who rise up against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him, <clears throat> excuse me, in Elohim. But you, O Yahweh. See, we have to focus on, regardless of how many are encamped round about us, coming against us. And this was in a time of, of war. So for the military, Israel, who is battling terrorism right now, but you, O Yahweh, are a shield round about me. My glory and he lifts <clears throat> up my head. So right there it gives you an indication of what the word shield in Hebrew means. It means to defend, to cover, to surround or hedge about. Yahweh is a wall of fire round about Jerusalem, the prophet said. 
Yahweh encamps round about you. He is your shield. So no matter what you are going through, we need to focus in on that greater is he that is in us. And I know that sometimes when you're going in the thick of things and battling, that sometimes those words just seem like they're empty words. But there's power in those words because they're Yah's words. And he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He surrounds you. He encompasses round about you. He covers you with his protection. Yahweh defends us. He covers us. He surrounds us. He, the creator of heaven and earth, he surrounds us. Psalm 28, 7, I'll just read these to you, and you can write them down and, and study them out for yourself. But it says, Psalm 28, 7, Yahweh, my strength and my shield. So, Yahweh introduced himself to Abraham that he says, I am your shield. I am Hallelujah. your shield. I am your shield. You know, when Paul talks about the shield of faith, it's just not, you know, a defensive thing just right you know a small shield but it's a shield that completely surrounds you it's a shield that completely surrounds you so when David was saying he is his strength and his shield he was saying I'm just going to chill out and rest because he surrounded me and nothing and no plans no strategies of a natural enemy or a spiritual enemy shall penetrate Hallelujah. Yahweh's shield or Yahweh's hedge or Yahweh's protection in Psalm 59 verse 11 Again, the writer writes, Yahweh, our shield. We, we, we cannot forget who surrounds us, who's protecting us, who's covering us, who's watching over us to deliver us from all evil day and night. It is Yahweh. It is Yahweh. He hedges us about behind a supernatural wall of divine protection. It also says in Psalm 84 and verse 9, Psalm 84 verse 9, O Yahweh, our shield. See, we need to be reminded of this. We need to be reminded of this. The battle is Yahweh's. The battle is Yahweh's. Psalm 91 and verse 4. Psalm 91 and verse 4. It says his truth or his laws and commandments is your shield and armor. So when you are obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, that shield is in force. Hallelujah. 
you are behind that supernatural wall of divine protection and nothing and no one can penetrate it. It's when we disobey Yahweh's laws and commandments or when we are a people or a nation that Yahweh's put a hedge up around and we continue in lawlessness, we continue living like the world lives, we continue in paganism, then that wall will be broken down and the enemy will penetrate it. But when you and I, believers in Yah, Hallelujah. believers in Yahshua, and ones that are obedient to the best of our ability to Yahweh's laws and commandments, that shield, that armor, that wall, that hedge will surround you. Now, I'm a person that likes a lot of them old westerns, and when the enemy was trying to attack the people, they built a fort. And the scripture says that Yahweh is our fortress. And when you are inside the fort, pretty much you are protected. Now, I know this was a natural fort, and they could only build it so high, and the enemy would try to come up over the walls, and sometimes they would. But in a supernatural fortress, they can there's no they cannot climb high enough yahweh will build that wall as high as it needs to be hallelujah look in psalm 115 verse 9 and this is just to remind us that he is our shield and that we need to stay behind the shield and how you stay behind the shield, it always comes back to this, his laws and commandments. Obeying his laws and commandments. Feeding on his laws and commandments. Receiving and accepting his laws and commandments as truth and as a way of life in which you and I are to live by. Psalm 115, verse 9 says, O oh, Israel. So who's he talking to? Us. Israel. Those that are grafted in and native born. He's talking to the people over in Israel right now. Trust in Yahweh. He is their help and their shield. You cannot trust in Yahweh or say you're trusting in him and then living like the world lives or living according to this pagan society we need to live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments okay another one Psalm 119 verse 114 Psalm 119 verse 114 it says, you are my hiding place. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is your hiding place. And my shield. I hope in your Torah, or in your law, or in your instructions. So he says here that Yahweh's Torah... Is where his hope is where his trust is and he says you are my hiding place my shield and again a shield in Hebrew means to defend to cover to surround or hedge about when Yahweh hedges you about no evil will come nigh your dwelling. And see, we need to trust in 
Yahweh's instructions more than we trust in the military or in natural weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural, but they are mighty through Yahweh for the pulling down of strongholds. You may trust in a gun. You may trust in a physical weapon. But someone else has a physical weapon that is just as accurate as your physical weapon. You need to trust in something that is greater than that physical weapon. You need to trust in something or someone that supersedes that physical weapon. I remember reading testimonies of people that were being held up and they would not give in <clears throat> to the robber and the robber pulled the trigger. The bullet was in the chamber but it would not fire. Why? They trusted in someone that is greater than that physical weapon and his name is Yahweh. And we have to trust that in these last days when wickedness and murder and all these things are going on all around us that we trust in our Creator Hallelujah. that He surrounds us yes. He defends us He protects us He builds a supernatural fortress or fort and hedges us about within it as high as it needs to be Hallelujah. to keep the enemy out. And again, it's dependent upon you and I following Yahweh's way, His Torah, His instructions, His laws and commandments. Now this does, isn't to criticize anybody, but I remember reading a word by someone on Facebook uh, concerning that attack in Israel. And that when they were out at that music concert, they were dancing to worldly music, satanic music, demonic music, music that glorifies flesh, lawlessness, sexuality, and sin. And it was at the end of a Sabbath. Why were they even there if they were obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments? You wouldn't be if you were truly obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments from your heart and not from just a religious a tradition. And this isn't to condemn anybody or to criticize. It's just to point out facts. We cannot compromise and be involved in celebrations that honors darkness, that promotes lawlessness and sin. And so much music today is of the evil one. It promotes sin. It promotes sexual sin. It promotes darkness. And the dark one is behind it. I mean, if you just read and do any research on rock and roll and the people that started it and people that got out of it and what they learned while they were in it, how dark it was and it was from the dark web it was from the prince of darkness and these are people that have gotten out of it and they saw it you wouldn't want nothing to do with it all right <clears throat> in psalm 144 verse 2 it says thank yahweh who trained my hands to fight and then a little further down in the verse it says Yahweh is his stronghold 
my Savior, the one in whom I take refuge. So you can't play on both sides of the fence. You can't compromise. You got to be set apart. That's why the scripture talks about being set apart. Set apart ones won't be at those worldly concerts. Set apart ones won't be listening to worldly music. Set apart ones will try even the things they watch on TV. They will make sure that the, the show they're watching is set apart. It's not glorifying darkness. He says, in whom I take refuge, my goodness, my high tower, and this is referring to Yahweh, my deliverer, my shield, in whom I trust. This describes, and there's so many verses that talks about Yahweh being our shield. And so I just want to remind you today that Yahweh is your shield. Yahweh is your shield. Now, the Hebrew word for shield talks, means he is our hedge. He hedges us about. It's not like you just build some hedges around your yard, but it's a supernatural hedge. And if you read in Job verse chapter 1, verse 10, we'll read that. And this is, now understand this about Job. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. This was given, and this took place before any instructions and promises by Yahweh. It took place before Yahshua came. And we need to understand this properly because many people have made doctrines out of this that, you know, Yahweh will only protect you. And if something bad happens to you, it's because he has decided to let the enemy come in. I just can't, that is not the Elohim I serve. Yahweh, my Heavenly Father, and Yahshua, our Messiah. There is no way that the adversary is allowed to approach the throne of Yahweh and gain permission to attack your life. No way. The only way he can gain entrance is through your actions or my actions, by your disobedience to Yahweh's laws and commandments, to your involvement in paganism, your involvement in things that you ought not be involved in. Those are the things that open the door. It is my belief, and I don't want to argue with anybody, so don't send me no emails or comments, it is my belief that when, you, when Hasatan was kicked out of heaven, he's not coming back. He's not allowed in. So this all took place before all that happened. And it says in Job 1.10, and this is Hasatan speaking to Yahweh, before all, like I just explained, have you not made a hedge about him? See, that's a fact. Yahweh made a hedge all about Job. Then it says, And his house, and about all that he has on every side. And then we know that Hasatan got permission and Yahweh took down the hedge. And like I said before, that is not the day in which we live in. So many covenants say the opposite. 
that Yahweh promises, I am your shield. I am your reward. I am your fortress. I am your strength and your rock. And I have given angels charge over you that no evil will come near you. And what's the qualifier? If you abide in the secret place of the Most High, which includes obeying His laws and commandments. When you do that, Hasatan cannot get through the hedge. He cannot climb over it. He cannot get around it. He can try to deceive you into disobeying Yah's laws and commandments. And then the hedge will begin to be broken down or cracked and he will sneak through like the thief that he is. But Yahweh's not going to give him permission. He said, Yahweh, Colossians 1, 13, that Yahweh has delivered you from the powers of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. If he's delivered you from the powers of darkness, why would he give the powers of darkness permission to do something evil in your life, to kill, steal, or destroy from your life? He wouldn't. The one that gives the powers of darkness the permission is you and I when we disobey his laws and commandments. But we need to see here that Yahweh built a supernatural hedge around Job and around his house. So we don't need to worry about anybody penetrating our house like a, a burglar or a robber. And about it, all that he has on every side. Your vehicles are safe. Anything on your property that is yours is safe. Why? Yahweh has built a hedge all around you. Why? Because you have accepted and received his plan of salvation, which is twofold. Accepting Messiah Yahshua and accepting and receiving his instructions, his laws and commandments, and you desire to live according to them. When you and I live like Yahshua did, according to his way, his truth, and his life, when we abide in his Torah, in his word, in his laws and commandments, that wall, that hedge, is supernaturally around us. And even if you fall, as quick as you repent, that hedge is rebuilt. And it is my personal belief that the enemy will look for those cracks. He will look for ways the hedge, you know, may have a little opening in it. But I believe Yah's grace and mercy covers that, at least for a short season. And Yah's spirit then goes to work to reveal to you you shouldn't have said what you said. You shouldn't have did what you did. You shouldn't have looked what you looked upon. And then it's up to you to receive it and to repent of it and to be corrected. So we see here in Job that Yahweh made a hedge it says satan says have you not made a hedge about him and everything in his life that's what yahweh does he is our shield he is our hedge maker if you will now here's 
a, a good verse. Go to Mark, the best book in the Bible. <laughs> Just messing around. Mark chapter 12 and verse 1, and this is a parable that Yahshua gave. And he began to speak to them in parables. And he said, a man planted a vineyard and set a fence or a hedge around it. Who's the vineyard? Israel. Who's the vineyard? Specifically, those that are grafted in and those that are native born. It says here that the very first thing this parable says is when he planted the vineyard, he built a hedge. He built a hedge. He built a hedge. He built a hedge. You and I are called to be hedge builders by the anointing and the calling of Yahweh's Spirit by and through Yah's laws and commandments. We have been commissioned to build a hedge, to build a supernatural enclosure on all sides. That's what hedge means in Hebrew. Or to build a fence to keep out the enemy. It's a defensive wall. And even now, as physical Israel is in a war, we who are here at home are praying and standing in the gap building a hedge round about them. And once that hedge gets built, Yahweh will then go to work and begin to show them how the enemy crept in, not just in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense. And I am praying that how far the land of Israel and the government of Israel has gone away from Yahweh's laws and commandments that Yahweh will put a hook in their jaw and pull them back in and say this cannot just be religious traditions the feast days the Sabbath cannot just be religious traditions you need to live according to my laws and commandments to the best of your ability 24 7 you need to be set apart be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with this pagan world Babylonian system. You need to be set apart. You need to be set apart. And to live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. That's what it means to build a hedge. In Ezekiel 22.30, we've all heard this verse thousands of times if you've been in Christianity or come out of Christianity and in Torah. I'm sure you've heard this many times. It says, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, not a hedge, the hedge. The hedge is Yahweh. The hedge is his laws and commandments. And stand in the gap before me for the land. What land? Land of Israel. People that say the land of Israel isn't the land of Israel, they obviously aren't reading all their scriptures. Because he says that we are to build a hedge, a supernatural hedge, the hedge, before Yahweh for the land. So Father, we just pray that you would build a supernatural hedge around the land of Israel. Now if you look in the physical land of Israel, they built a fence but Hamas was able to get through that fence. 
So there needs to not just be a stronger natural hedge, but there needs to be a supernatural hedge that only comes from Yahweh, but, and it comes through prophetic watchmen that are calling the people of Israel, the government of Israel, the land of Israel, all Torah believers, all Messiah believers, to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments, to come back to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And then it says that I should not destroy the land, and he, but he said to Ezekiel, I found none. Well, that's not going to be the case in today, because I know at least with my wife and I, and the people in our assembly, we are building a hedge. We are standing in the gap, not only for America, not only for those in Messiah, not only for the nations, but for the nation of Israel, that Yahweh would write his laws and commandments upon their heart, that Yahweh would put a hook in their jaw and bring them back to faith in Yahweh's laws and commandments, faith back to the Sabbath, to the feast days, and to all of Yahweh's instructions. In Isaiah 5 and verse 12, and we'll end this here, it says, I made a hedge around it. I made or built a hedge around it. What's the it that it's referring to? Israel. Yahweh built a hedge around Israel. And what tears down that hedge is our defiant to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Our defiant to do what is right in Yahweh's eyes. Now, we need to realize we all come short. We all miss it. But when you do, and Yahweh's Spirit is living strong within you, you are quick to repent. I learned that many years ago from a minister. Just be quick to repent. Just to be, be quick, turn away from whatever it is that you did that you shouldn't have done, and get back in obedience to living a set-apart life according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. I'm looking for a verse. Um, anyways. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 37, that in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So whatever it is, you're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. So we just studied about Yahweh being our shield. And that means that he surrounds us. We also saw that Yahweh is our hedge. And just as he made a hedge round about Job and round about all the things, his house, his family, those are facts. He built that hedge. Yahweh built that hedge. Actually, Job built it through obedience to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And just as there was a hedge round about Job, you and I need to believe that Yahweh 
is building and there is a supernatural hedge around us. And just as Yahshua gave that parable in Mark chapter 12 about the vineyard, and the vineyard equals Israel, which is you and I, those that obey His laws and commandments, as well as the native born. We are grafted into that same vine, that same root, that He built a hedge to protect the vineyard. The vineyard are you and I in Messiah. You and I in Torah that believe Yahweh's laws and commandments. So he is our shield. You need to meditate on that. You need to research scriptures about how he's our shield. And he said to Abram in the beginning, I am your shield. I am your protection. I am the one that will build the supernatural hedge round about you. We need not to forget that. We need to stay focused in on that. We need to believe to have received that. And we also need to obey His laws and commandments because that's what keeps the hedge intact. You and I obeying His laws and commandments is like um, the mortar that is in our bricks or our, our block, center block houses. It keeps it all secured. You remove the mortar, the bricks will fall. You stop obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, the bricks will fall. So we need to stand in the gap for America that they would come back to Yahweh's laws and commandments as we build a hedge, a supernatural hedge. We need to do the same for the nation of Israel as well as all other nations and believers in other nations. You need to begin prophesying and calling forth the hedge. What did Yahweh say to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, prophesy to these bones that they may live. And as he prophesied as he was commanded, he heard a crackling and a pop, and <clears throat> the bones came to life. We need to do the same concerning our nations coming back to Yahweh's laws and commandments. That's the only hope we have. Remember, it's not Yah's will that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. What's the truth? Yahweh's laws and commandments. And be delivered, be rescued, be healed, be protected, so on and so forth. So Father, we just thank you for this word of instruction. We pray, Father, that we all would receive greater insight and greater understanding concerning what you are saying about that you are our shield and you are our hedge. We thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us has prospered, nor will it ever prosper. We also thank you, Father, that people that are keeping Torah through just religious traditions, that you would open the eyes of their understanding and that they would allow you to place your Torah inside their heart, inside their mind, and that they would live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And Father, we pray for the nation of Israel that you would forgive them for the ways that they have walked away from obeying your laws and commandments. The ways that they are just caught up in tradition and not in the spirit of the Torah, and not in Messiah Yahshua. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are forgiving them and cleansing them of all unrighteousness. 
and that you would do the same for us in our nations in which we live and in our own personal lives. We thank you, Father, for the hedge that is round about us, that is built around us, and we can live safely in that hedge. And no matter where we go, we drive to school, we go to work, no matter a thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right side, it will not come to us. Why? Because of you, Father. Because of your name. Because of your laws and commandments. And so, Father, we give you praise. We bless your name. We worship you this day. Hallelujah. And, Father, we thank you for your instructions. Renew our minds to the fact that you are our shield. Hallelujah. You are our hedge. And we thank you for it. If you want to connect with us, you can connect with us at YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com. You can connect with us uh, on our Facebook groups and page after the same name, or you can connect with me, Mark Pulley. Until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh keep you. May Yahweh build a hedge round about you. May Yahweh be your shield. May Yahweh be for you everything that you need him to be. He is the I am. His name is Yahweh. He is our deliverer. He is our savior. And Yahweh, we just give you praise. We bless you. As I bless the people that are listening by the power of your name, I bless them with your name. I bless them with your grace. I bless them with your mercy. I bless them with your goodness. I bless them with your shield and your, you are their fortress you are their rock you are their salvation you are their deliverance you are their provider and father we just bless you we thank you and until next time shalom shalom